top of the line. You can get under your sound silk bone. Get one of your curves, okay? Go silk bone. Won't be there. This is the same guy. You can buy some of your hair from the same guy. Today, I'm going to get you.
really nice to meet you.
beach with you right now.
not deliberate, not random, someplace in between. They called it automatic heart. Let's make this nice stuff. Ha, ha, ha. 
Yes, then what? I wouldn't accept it. Also, I'd report the person who gave it to me to the police. You've got a little boy. He shows you his butterfly collection, plus the killing jar. I take him to the doctor. You're watching television. Suddenly you realize there's a wasp crawling in your arm. I'd kill it. You're reading a magazine. You come across a full-page nude photo of a girl. Is this testing whether I'm a replicant or a lesbian, Mr. Deckard? Just answer the questions, please. You show it to your husband. He likes it so much, he hangs it on your bedroom wall. I wouldn't let him. Why not? I should be in the floor. stage play, a banquet is in progress. The guests are enjoying an appetizer of raw oysters. The entree consists of boiled duck.
Can you remember the moment when you lost that childish sense of... I do. I remember how it felt like falling and falling. Some people call these things destiny, but I don't like to call it that. Because it sounds like there actually was a plan behind this random unfairness, and I don't think so. It's just the way life can go, and I don't want to romanticize stuff. So I also won't romanticize things by saying you should live each day as if it was your last. I don't think that's too helpful. But I get the idea behind it and it's not easy to replace this quote by one that is more soothing. It's hard to find the right words when it comes to that. But I just think that we need to be aware of the fact that there might not be countless days for us. I like to remind myself of the small wonder that every second is. Mind-blowing biochemical processes keeping us alive. But they are not without failure. It's so ambivalent, how can one be so strong and so vulnerable at the same time? The thought that there could always and much sooner than we'd think be an end to everything started to scare me. So I had to learn another important thing, which is to not let this rule over you. Life should be for living in the first place, not for fearing its end. Worship the love and beauty you experience and try to let go of your fear. Then you'll be as equal as possible. Equal to life, to death, so let go, but don't push, because you'll be ready without forcing it. Instead, you'll grow into it. At that period of time, I knew I'd have to find a way to cope with my new fears. I knew I'd have to face reality and see life's uncertainty as part of the whole. And I'd like to believe that through all storms, we can always find the way back to our inner strength. I'd like to believe that even if we feel like falling and falling, we can land with both feet on the ground again. I'd like to believe that whenever we might have to deal with new fears, we will also find new trust. <laughs>